In this lecture, we're going to look over prescriptions and labels. We're also going to talk about the different kinds of physician orders. There are several ways that prescription orders can be given. There are written orders, verbal orders, e-orders, and standing orders. Written orders are the first choice of orders if possible to avoid mistakes. They should be written or typed clearly and accurately. Written orders may be typed or written by others, but they need to be signed by the prescriber in most instances. When Schedule II drugs are prescribed, there must be a written order and it must be signed by the prescriber. In emergency situations, a verbal order can be taken, but still needs to be signed before administration of the medication, if at all possible. Let's look a little closer at verbal orders. So with a verbal order, prescription directs another healthcare professional to give, which is usually a stat order, or to write a prescription. This order can be in person, such as in an emergency, or over the phone. Care must be taken when we write these verbal orders that we carefully write words and numbers and read what you have written back prescriber. This is protocol in all hospitals and a critical practice. In the hospital I work at, we document TORB, T-O-R-B, telephone order recited back, and we do read those orders back to the physician. The physician must co-sign and date verbal orders, usually within 24 hours. E-prescriptions are getting really popular in our technology age. The prescription is created electronically by the prescriber and sent directly to the pharmacy. When prescriptions are sent this way, it can help to verify insurance coverage and it may identify any medication interactions. This type of order also avoids errors that can happen with illegible writing. Standing orders are a list of orders used in specific circumstances that routinely occur. Standing orders can be used in preparation for procedures or admission to the hospital. Even though these are pre-printed orders, they require review and signature by the prescriber. A prescription, again, is a written record of the prescriber's order. Individuals who are licensed to prescribe medications may vary from state to state, so it's important that you know your state laws. Prescribers can include physicians, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants. All prescriptions need the following information. Note that this example is an old prescription, so some of the information isn't provided. So we have the name, contact number, and DEA number of the prescriber. A DEA number is a registration number that's assigned to a healthcare provider by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration and allows them to write prescriptions for controlled substances. This number must be pre-printed on the prescription form, and as you see, it's missing on this one. Then there's the name, address, date of birth of the patient, and the date of order. The letter RX is called the superscription, and that means take thou. The inscription part of this prescription gives the name of the drug, the dosage, and the quantity to be dispensed. They will always use, or often use, the number sign for this. Signature, or SIG, provides instructions to patients on how to take the medication. The subscription part of the prescription includes the refill numbers, and it's never blank. There's a box to check on the newer prescriptions whether a generic can be used, and then the signature of the prescriber. The amount of medication contained in the prescription bottle must be listed. The pharmacist puts warning labels on a prescription container to make sure the patient knows the best way to take the medication and be aware of possible situations to avoid. Some labels may include shake well, keep refrigerated, do not drink alcoholic beverages with this medication, and avoid sunlight. Medication bottles from the manufacturer must also include certain information. The manufacturer's name is identified and it includes a national drug code or an NDC number and a lot number. The NDC number is assigned to each medication and identifies the manufacturer, the product, and the size of the container. When you see it on the label it will say NDC and it's followed by a 10-digit number. The name of the medication 
which includes the generic and the trade name, the strength, the dosage form, quantity, and manufacture if generic also needs to be on there. The route of administration needs to be included and refill information must also be on there. OTC are over-the-counter drugs and they don't require a prescription. The FDA has said that if it's taken as directed, these medications are safe, although the drug may cause side effects, which is listed on the label. Many believe that if a medication is OTC, that it's totally safe. It's important for us to educate our patients about safely taking OTC medications. They need to look at the directions, the side effects, and warnings on the label. The active and inactive ingredients are, are listed. You know, they may be surprised to find ingredients like aspirin that are added to the medication. Patients should always let their healthcare provider know they're taking OTC products because they can interfere with their prescription medication. It's important as healthcare workers that we know the abbreviations related to medication administration so that we don't make an error. Do you know what this SIG is? It says, one drop in both eyes three times a day. All right, here's some medical abbreviations related to medication administration. How many of these do you know? We have with, elixir, gram, grain, drop, microgram, milliequivalent, milliliter, milligram, ounce, tablet, tablespoon, teaspoon, with meals, both ears, right ear, left ear, twice a day, discontinue, at bedtime, nothing by mouth, both eyes, right eye, left eye, as needed, after meals, four times a day, without, right away, and three times a day. Well, that's it for prescriptions and labels. Make sure you let me know if you have any questions, bring it to the Farm Cafe, or to class.